In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the Z critical value using Microsoft Excel. Um, so let's first talk about a Z critical value relative to a confidence interval. <clears throat> so if we were making a Z critical value and we were creating say a 95% confidence interval, we remember that of course we're assuming that the variables are normally distributed. And if we're looking at a 95% CI, that CI stands for confidence interval. Effectively, we're looking for the central 95% of observations. <clears throat> we know that one minus 0 0.95 is equal to 0 0.05. We then do therefore 0 0.05 divided by two is equal to 0 0.025, which means that there is 0 0.025 in each one of the tails. So we'll just change the color just to highlight what we mean. <clears throat> so there's 2.5% in our right tail and 2.5% in our left tail. Of course, what that means is that if we're looking for some associated value, we'll call Z here. The area to the left of this critical value is simply going to be 1 minus 0 0.025. That is the area here to the right, which of course gives us 0 0.975. So this yellow shaded region is equal to 0 0.975. Same thing can be done if we're creating a 90% confidence interval. Of course, we have our normal distribution centered around zero. We have our points here, and we're creating 90% confidence interval. So 1 minus 0 0.90 is equal to 0 0.10. So therefore, 0 0.10 divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.05. And as we've done before, we can just highlight where that is. So we have 0.05% in our left tail and 0.05% in our right tail. So when we're looking for our area shaded to the left here, all we're going to do then is 1 minus 0.05 is equal to 0 0.95 and this is the corresponding probability we'd look up in our normal distribution table. Now we don't have to always use our normal distribution table because we have the power of computation. So using the power of computation we can open up Microsoft Excel. So we'll just open up Microsoft Excel here and I'll zoom in so that Everybody can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> so if we're creating, let's start with our 95% confidence interval. So 95% CI. We're looking here then, so our confidence level is 95%, so 0 0.95. The area to the right is simply equal to one, equal one minus our confidence level divided by two. Oops. Is equal to one minus one minus our confidence level divided by two. And you'll see that we get 0 0.025 to the right. We can then look up our Z star value. And all we're going to do here is we're going to say equals norm norm.s.inv and we're going to look up this probability but first let's do one minus the selected probability. We'll close our brackets and what you'll see is that we get our Z critical value and if we were to round this to two decimal points like you're accustomed to, we'd get a Z critical of 1.96. Let's repeat this process just for the sake of practicing. So a 90% CI, so our confidence level is equal to 0 0.90. The area to the right is equal to 
one minus our confidence level divided by two, right? We're dividing by two because it's symmetrical, just like we did on uh, when we drew this by hand. So then we look up our Z critical value here is equal to norm dot S dot I N V. We have our probabilities. So e one minus the area to the right, close our brackets and we get 1.6448. Again, if we round two decimal points, we get 1.64. Let's make it one more decimal point, 1.645. And that's how, and we can do it one more time just for sake of practice. Let's say you're asked to create some kind of arbitrary confidence level. Let's say 99% um, CI. So our confidence level 0.99, our area to the right is equal to one minus that level divided by two. So our Z's critical here is equal to norm dot s dot i n v one minus the area to the right close bracket and we get 2.575 we can put this into three decimal points 2.576 that's it for this video but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy consider showing your support by giving the video a like and if you still need more help with statistics then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.